Yes, very, very good evening, uh, everyone. Thank you so much for visiting our page, Reverse Factor. This is Karan Kakkad, founder of Reverse Factor, where we help people reverse lifestyle disease with the help of right food. As we have spoken n number of times, it is never about medicine or no medicine. It is always about treating the root cause of the disease. I think one of the most fundamental uh, objective that all of us has when it comes to good health is that when we are in our 60s, 70s and 80s, we should be fit, fine, healthy. And the only way we can be fit, fine, healthy in our 60s and 70s and 80s is if we focus on our immunity, if we focus on good health, uh, you know, treating the root cause, which is very, very important. So very, very happy to announce that the guest for our today's session is uh, Professor and Dr. Sujoy Roy Chaudhary. Thank you so much, sir, for being a part of this session. It is indeed a pleasure to have you today with us. It has been a long time that I have known him. He is an MD, MBBS, MRCP and FRCP certified as well. He is a cardiologist as well as a diabetologist. He's one of the prominent names when it comes to the reputed doctors in the medical community. Apart from being a doctor himself, he's also a professor and he teaches to lots and lots of upcoming doctors who can shape up the medical fraternity of our country. Thank you so much, sir, once again for joining in. It is indeed a pleasure. And I'm sure that all of us today will be learning a lot from you. So before we begin, and uh, you know, today's topic for discussion is lifestyle disease and holistic health, especially during COVID times. So, uh, you know, so there are a lot of viewers who are suffering from diabetes or heart disease or other metabolic syndromes and uh, so what precautions should they be taking care of if they have uh, different comorbidity uh, as a result of which their risk level goes up for COVID. So your suggestions to all those viewers who might have or someone in their family might have a couple of lifestyle diseases, be blood pressure, diabetes. Um, I think I've just lost him. I will just get him in a minute. But before that, uh, Dr. Sujoy is going to help us answer most of our questions when it comes to lifestyle diseases and COVID. He himself has experienced uh, talking and advising a lot of patients uh, when it comes to COVID because, uh, yes. So yes, Dr. Sujoy, over to you now. Any suggestions for people who have, who have multiple uh, lifestyle diseases? So what, what would your recommendation for them would be? Yes, you're very right now. Yeah, Karan, you're just can you hear me, Karan? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Yeah, in this COVID, difficult COVID times one, everybody has to be very careful about not contracting COVID. And we have to be more alert in patients who have got comorbid conditions. A lot of our elderly patients have got hypertension, diabetes, ischemic heart disease, dyslipidemia or high cholesterol. So our chronic yeah. obstructive area, these patients who have got this comorbid conditions, they are more at risk of suffering the complications of COVID. So right. this group of patients who have got uh, these complications, they have to be more extra careful so that they can keep the, my first advice is that they should keep their medical condition very well controlled. Their blood mm -hmm. pressure, blood sugar, cardiac condition, lipid level should be well under control. And mm -hmm. along with that, they should follow the basic safety rules like uh, always mask, using mask all the time, frequent hand washing, social distancing in today's time so that they can avoid getting COVID. But if they have COVID, they have to be extra careful because one has to make sure that their medical condition is more under control so that they can fight the complications of COVID. That's very important. Sir, with the rise of COVID, we have more and more people who are doing home quarantine, right? So my question yes. to you, and which can really help a lot of people, is what are your practical advices for people who are doing home quarantine and how can they monitor their health and also the use of uh, pulse oximeter to detect it. So your advice on people who are suffering with COVID and who are in their homes being quarantined and taking care of themselves. Yes, this is a very important question. In our, mm -hmm. As the COVID graph is rising day by day, we are getting a lot of cases coming up to us. And there are some cases who are asymptomatic or don't know that they have COVID only after the testing they come to know. Or some patients right. have very mild symptoms like fever or some throat pain. 
or just generally feeling a bit weak. And once the test is COVID positive, and my first advice to this group of patients would be not to panic, be mentally strong. One can manage these cases by home isolation. If uh, you, you are in touch with the doctor and if you have some appliances where at home, like for example, these patients, I tell them that when you are at home isolation, you must uh, restrict yourself to a room, should not mix with your other family members or other people should not come and talk, meet you. Second important thing is that you must know, monitor your clinical condition if you are feeling generally okay. And if your temperature levels are reasonably under control, if they don't go, go to very high levels, if you're blood. All right, I think. Uh, keep, keep this under control. Uh, sir, so one question. These are the advices I give to my patients. Uh, sir, when when can will anyone take a can you hear me? Yes, uh, when, yes we can hear you, sir. Uh, oh, when can uh, we uh, we can hear you? Can you hear us? Hello. Yeah, we can hear you, doctor. Yes, can you hear Hello? us, doctor? Yes. Can you hear can us? Can you hear me? Uh, I we can hear you. We can hear you. Can you hear us? Yes, can you hear us, uh, uh, doctor? Or else uh, you can. Yeah, I think you let him reconnect. One of the very very important thing which I have been observing in many patients is that when people are di being diagnosed with COVID, uh, you know it is very important for them to know. Uh, yes, sir. Can you hear us now? Yes, sir. Sorry okay. for the interruption. Actually, no, I, was, I was I was saying that when you are at home, you should monitor your clinical condition, you should know that how you're feeling, if you're feeling generally okay, and if your blood pressure and your uh, temperature levels are reasonably okay, and your oximeter is a simple device that a lot of people keep at home. If your pulse right. oximeter reads above 94 or 93, then you're on the safe zone. And if you see that they're falling below 92 or 90, then you should alert your, contact your doctor. But otherwise, many patients we have managed at home successfully, by instituting the uh, home quarantine, and advising them on the basic rules, how to keep yourself safe at home and uh, how to monitor your condition by taking some basic drugs like symptomatic treatment like paracetamol or some uh, antiviral right. drugs. Like, uh, so these things, they can be quite okay. Only in the difficult, my complicated question, cases. My yes. question, doctor, uh, to you here is that is there any uh, biomarker or any test that people should be definitely checking? And uh, is there any time when they can decide when they can be home quarantined or is there a need for them to get hospitalized? Yes, very. this is an important thing you've asked me. Once a patient is diagnosed to be COVID and is monitoring himself at home, besides after knowing that you are positive for COVID, then besides your clinical monitoring and all those things that I was talking about, home monitoring, two or three important markers one can check to see how they're behaving. Now, one important test that nowadays we are recommending is a FDP or a dear level, fibrin degradation product, blood level, that is high in some patients, then he needs very special attention. Another test we do is interleukin-6, IL-6, I see. If the interleukin-6, if IL-6 levels are very high, then he is a bad candidate because he can flare, by, the immunological flare-up can be very worse in this sort of patients. So if your IL-6 right. levels are high or if your DIC levels are very high, you must contact your doctor. He will institute proper therapy by giving the right drug. And if you're still not settling and if you're deteriorating, as I said, if your blood oxygen is going down, if you're feeling unwell, if you're getting drowsy, confused, and your temperature is running very high, more than 100 to 3, then definitely know it's time to be hospitalized. These are the markers we rely on, the clinical markers, the oximeter readings, oxygen levels, the high temperature, and also the antibodies that are talked about, IL-6 and DIC. These are the two important things which have helped us. So to all the viewers, IL-6 and D, uh, DIC are two important biomarkers which people should be checking. And if the levels are high, then only uh, it is advisable for you to get admitted. Otherwise, majority of the cases uh, we are seeing, doctor, is uh, they are becoming fine when they are being home yeah. quarantined and being taking care yeah. of their immunity, their food, their lifestyle habits, which is very, very important. Uh, would you want to share a, a personal experience uh, which you were mentioning the other day and what learnings can people have out of that? Because you have been talking to a lot of patients also and you're helping them recover 
uh, to not only you, you see a lot of heart patients, people with high blood pressure, people with diabetes, and uh, you have seen many of them also getting positive. So how are, how are they recovering out of this? Yes. 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 Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. As I was saying that I'm seeing different types of patients. Some of the patients who are quite I have treated who are quite asymptomatic. They have just been accidentally discovered to be COVID positive because they came in contact with the COVID patient. Those patients mm -hmm. and the some of them have got very mild symptoms which can be managed at home. These groups have done very well. At the other extreme, there are some patients who are in the middle age group or elderly group who have not done that well and they have deteriorated to a big extent and have them have to admit it, have to admit them into hospital and institute mm -hmm. certain measures like, so they have different groups I've seen, but in majority I'll say about 60% or 70% of my patients have been asymptomatic or mild, and they've responded right. quite well by home isolation. Only about one third or 30% of the patients have had to admit in hospital. So that's right. why I can say that patients should not be unduly scared that all, everybody who has COVID should be hospitalized, to not rush to the right. hospital all the time, because most of you can manage it at home by following some simple quarantine measures and following right. a proper diet plan and taking some uh, uh, high protein diet and something to boost up your immunity, which you can talk about better than me. And right. also some in basic steps. So in fact, there are a lot, lot of studies are showing that, uh, you know, vitamin B, uh, vitamin D level for import, uh, for example, vitamin D is yes. very, very important. Uh, you know, for for immunity, or we all know that vitamin D is very important. But for people, uh, also, you know, from COVID point of view, would you recommend uh, to for everyone to keep checking and maintaining good vitamin D levels? Yes, you're right. Vitamin D levels, if they're found to be very low, then you're more prone to get the complications of COVID. Vitamin D is a very important vitamin because not only COVID, some other diseases, the intensity of diabetes or any heart disease or diabetes, cholesterol, all these factors, if you have low vitamin D in your body, and you tend to fare poorly by having more complications. That is well known. Similarly with COVID, right. if your vitamin D levels are low, you're more prone to get the complications of COVID and more risk of hospitalization. So vitamin D levels should be well maintained by taking right drugs like vitamin D and also certain foodstuffs which are rich in vitamin D. And also right. along with that, I think your protein and albumin levels should be good and your vitamin, certain foodstuffs like vitamin C is also very important in these times because that helps to Very boost true. the immunity. Absolutely, and, uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so all these measures should be instituted. These are very easy things to go do at home. And if you follow a right diet plan by taking the right steps, and if you right. don't panic, you can easily manage this condition at home and get fit and well. True. Having spoken of albumin levels, uh, doctor, wanted to uh, wanted your opinion on this. Uh, kidney is also another organ which uh, yeah. could be at high risk after lungs when it comes to COVID and there are a number of studies coming up on this. Any any uh, recommendation for anyone who has some kind of chronic kidney disease or, or high susceptibility to weak EGFR levels, what would you recommend for them? Yeah, for them, I, can accept, I have to take extra precaution in patients who have got chronic kidney disease or patients, there are some of the patients who have got COVID who are on dialysis or CKD patients. Okay. They have done, okay. their, their course has been a bit tumultuous because the as you know, their body immunity levels are low because of their kidney condition. So they have to right. be more strictly followed. And these patients should be sometimes admitted in hospital because they are at risk of getting the complications of COVID because of the fact that they're immunologically deficient in certain uh, proteins which help in fighting the COVID. Because the kidney is not working properly, the body immune reserves are down and they tend to lose a lot of protein from their urine. So these patients are, have to be specially monitored in ICC or hospital settings especially those undergoing dialysis. And for them, special measures should be instituted like proper control of the blood pressure, proper control of their creatinine and urea levels by and making sure their immunologic right. is strong by giving them certain vitamins or proteins in infusion form, which can boost up their reserve. So that way they can fight the infection better. But you're also seeing people on dialysis recovering from COVID, right? Yes, a lot of the patients are recovering because they have done well, they have instituted measures, early measures, and then many of them have been able to come out. And many of them have Understood. done quite well. Yeah. 
Understood. Because you know those patients are anyways at high risk and they they are more afraid and more scared. So definitely, definitely one message that I am getting, Doctor Sujoy, uh, from talking to all uh, you know eminent uh, persons like you is definitely there is no reason to panic. You know because yeah. uh, you know people like you and other speakers on our on our uh, page have have been seeing patients with COVID. So definitely one uh, quick advice for all the viewers is there's nothing to panic. right test right diagnosis and doing the right things is very very important so speaking about the blood test and the biomarkers that you were speaking um, il6 is one thing that people need to check if they have covid positive another one is dic correct apart from these two yeah apart from these two there are also crp levels uh, and ldh which is crp yeah crp levels if they're very high in a particular patient with covid and one should be more alert in this it's a high alert sign that you have to be more cautious with gen- dealing with this gentleman because he can run the risk of running into more complications and you know if a covid patient most important complication you tend to worry is covid pneumonia covid tends okay. to attack the lungs ultimately and that pneumonia can be fatal because one can die of uh, pneumonia leading to septicemia and multi organ failure or multi organ dysfunction but the heart kidney brain and the uh, all the, everybody is suffer in unison and all, all the organs go aware that is one condition mm-hmm. we really worry about other thing sometimes we tend to worry in our covid patients is that lot of them once they land up with covid pneumonia they tend to have pulmonary embolism or lung clots or clots right. anywhere in the body they can even suffer a cerebral vascular accident or a cva or they can even have a myocardial infarction or a heart attack that is the things which are all coming we're seeing in a lot of our patients that uh, they mm-hmm. make the blood more thrombogenic and more prone to forming clots so correct if there's tackling covid infection you must also tackle the associated organ dysfunction because the once this organ dysfunction sets in in the form of kidney failure heart failure or the pulmonary failure or the patient right. can land with a pulmonary stroke or a brain stroke so everything have to be cautious about so so we must try and prevent this from happening so from the very beginning you have to be uh, very conscious and take, take the patient on a very serious note if the patient's clinical condition is deteriorating if the fever is not settling if they have dp levels crp levels so the il6 levels are high mm-hmm. you must not waste time in and admitting them to the intensive care unit and monitoring them strongly and if these cases are very high this levels are high you must institute certain drugs which can help in treating this condition in a better way we have certain good drugs which have come up like anticoagulants can be given some immunosuppressant drugs can be given to monitor the il6 some antiviral you know, fact, injections uh, can be given steroids can be given they can definitely help in these situations In, in fact, so many uh, different uh, patients we are seeing, and with COVID, you know, both there are two people, both with COVID, but one has uh, moderate CRP and uh, moderate symptoms, moderate fever. Another one has very high fever, a lot of body pain, high CRP. So that person needs a little more care and uh, yes. more uh, conditioning, which has to be better. Uh, speaking about oximeter, sir, there is something known as uh, the pulse rate, which is also uh, which is also which people can also monitor from their oximeter generally uh, another feedback that come from lot of patients is that the pulse rate level remains high 110 115 and you also meet lot of patients who have high blood pressure or heart disease patients so when you when you talk to patients who have uh, high pulse uh, rates any particular advice uh, during covid times for them yes definitely when when you are monitoring with the pulse oximeter the top you are getting is the oxygen level the down run okay. is the pulse you are getting so the oxygen levels as i told you if your oxygen levels are above 94 or 95 you are in the safe zone if it keeps dropping right. below 92 or 90 then you know in the red zone and you must take medical advice similarly with right. the pulse normally the pulse if it stays between 80 to 100 or 105 it's reasonably okay but once it crosses 100 and goes up to 110 20 then patient has a reflex tachycardia in some cases this okay. tachycardia is due to the inherent anxiety of the patient patient is very anxious about his disease in some cases it is a sympathetic response the body is trying to fight the covid and it can be also due to high fever fever causes the pulse rate to go high so all these factors mm-hmm. have to be eliminated first if you want to make sure that the patient doesn't have any high fever or the patient is not unduly very stressed or anxious these have been overruled and if the pulse is still high then definitely it's a warning sign that patient may land up with complications because The pulse, the high pulse rate, can be a harbinger, the marker that maybe he is going to land up into septicemia or induced complication because his body is trying to react by it's like a danger oh. signal that is trying to give, saying that you need attention and you must consult your right. doctor. 
very true but you very very rightly said that being more anxious or being more stressed could also unnecessarily increase your uh, pulse rate which is really not advisable and we have no, seen in no. lot of patients doing left nostril breathing or some yoga exercises they are they able to bring down their pulse rate uh, to a very very uh, you know quick margin and i think uh, you know i think that advice also needs to go to lot of people a uh, sir couple of messages that you would want to give to all the viewers you know uh, especially during this time couple of things that they should really take care and even if they have uh, comorbidity you know uh, what are those points which they should always remember and not fear or be stressful about the situation the first message that i would like to give everyone in this covid times is that you have to be very vigilant at all times you must follow the basic safety measures all the time like using the face mask frequently uh, going for hand wash to prevent sanitize your hands and also avoiding social distancing this is the three basic steps one must always follow and if you are unfortunate right. and you are a victim of covid and you should not panic it's a medical condition you're dealing with it's a viral illness like any common cold or flu is just that we are more worried and hyped in today's times because the media has made us more alert about it and we tend to be right. fear that this is a any of fear that all the time anybody who gets covid will ultimately die but that's not the fact most of the patients Correct. recover in our country the death rate is still very low it's only about 2 to 3% varies between that in india most of the patient right. 97 percent patients are recovering so you must not worry so much and feel that if you have covid you're going to die or you're not going to make it you have to be mentally strong all the time and mentally strong and then only you'll be able to fight the disease because i've realized that if you're not mentally strong your immune system is also not geared up to fight the disease and if you think Absolutely. all the time that you're going to yeah and along mm -hmm. with that uh, one of the important thing is once you have covid you must follow the basic isolation procedures as i said you must stay at home if you have got mild symptoms or you are asymptomatic for at least a couple of weeks and only then if you are right. symptom free or you have tested negative then only you have to mix with people to avoid community transmission and in patients who deteriorate like i have said by seeing that if the clinical condition goes worse or the temperature is running very high or if you get breathless or your oxygen levels get dro dropped so then in that case you must take hospital admission and once you are in hospital there also you should be mentally strong because you you have been you can, you can fight this disease you can come out i for example i'll give you a personal example i have been a covid warrior i had contracted covid from one of my patients uh, about 2 months back but this mm -hmm. is just an uh, lesson to a viewer that uh, i also had to be hospitalized because my oxygen level was going down and uh, my temperature was not settling and i was getting covid pneumonia but once i was in hospital mm -hmm. i had to be very mentally strong seeing everybody so once you're in an icu isolation ward you can definitely get very depressed and anxious since so many sick patients right. near you but if you keep mentally strong and if you are vigilant that I, and you always feel that you can always fight the disease and you can always be a covid a warrior and can come out of this disease very easily that's what my message is because i've been also able to come out and i fought this disease successfully even though i had comorbid conditions i had hypertension i had diabetes but all these were under well mm -hmm. good control and i went to the hospital right. at the right time so if you have covid and if you're that is my message i'm going to give to the to, to my people that if i can do it anybody can do it and i'm well near excellent. about 58 yeah. excellent i think i think that was very very inspiring you know uh, to all the viewers we have in front of us uh, dr sujoy roy choudhury who himself because by interacting couple of uh, his patients he got covid couple of months back and it's all about being mentally strong i think that one one phrase you have really put it very very well doctor and um, i think that that is something that all of us can do you know it is in our hands it is a choice and uh, also what you mentioned the 97 to 98% of people who have been diagnosed with covid are coming out very very well right and it is just about uh, you know the right mindset right attitude doing the right things which are very very important okay immunity is going to play a very very important role so that is something that people should always remember thank you so much sir uh, you know for sh coming on our show and sharing your experience and your your messages to people will be very very helpful because this is a time when we as a community has to come together and we need to spread right information so that more and more people can benefit out of us thank you so much sir once again for being a part of this and i'm sure your story will inspire hundreds of people and thousands of people to do the right things and come out of this as quickly as they can thank you very much for allowing me to come on this platform it was also my pleasure to talk to you and also talk to the viewers who are listening 
and my last advice would be always to be mentally patient and strong and you can definitely be be able to fight covid if you get it that's the last advice i'll give it to everyone great thank you so much everyone all the viewers for being a part of this so one strong message coming today from one of the eminent doctors of calcutta dr sujay roy choudhury is be mentally strong and that is something that can really help uh, you fight a disease and come out of it as a warrior rather than being uh, surrendering to the disease thank you so much once again doctor and thank you so much all the viewers for being a part of this show thank you so much thank you